nous sommes ici pour parler de la recréation de l'œuvre de Sol Lewitt, du, de ce World Wowing qui a, euh, qui a été fait l'objet d'une commande publique euh, du Centre National des Arts Plastiques en 1994, dans un contexte euh, très particulier, celui de l'installation d'une collection d'art contemporain dans ce château, par la volonté du ministère de la Culture de l'époque. L'État était propriétaire de ce château depuis 1943, il l'avait racheté dans un but de sauvegarde et de, de, de gros travaux de consolidation ont eu lieu dans les années 50-60, des travaux ensuite de restauration de ces décors peints. Et la question du, de l'occupation des lieux, des salles, s'est rapidement posée et le ministère de la Culture a souhaité à ce moment-là ouvrir une voie nouvelle, originale, celle d'inviter des artistes à créer des œuvres spécifiquement pour les différents espaces du château. Le ministère de la Culture, à cette époque, pour constituer cette collection d'art contemporain fait appel à Jean-Hubert Martin qui élabore un, un concept fondé sur l'idée des anciennes collections de la Renaissance qui étaient les cabinets de curiosité. Et l'œuvre de Sol Lewitt s'inscrit directement dans, cette, dans cet esprit ou dans cette volonté de, ré, de retrouver l'esprit de curiosité de la Renaissance. On est là dans une dans une galerie de peinture qui date des années 1547-1549 que l'on doit à Claude Gouffier, on est donc en, on est, euh, au cœur de la Renaissance. Et la commande de, de, de Sol Lewitt, le World Drawing de Sol Lewitt, euh, y fait directement écho par l'ampleur de la, de la surface peinte et par le fait bien sûr d'être une, une peinture appliquée au mur, indissociable du, du bâtiment qui l'accueille. Un autre élément euh, dans le décor du château, également du XVIe siècle, c'est ce plafond dit Arlequin qui ornait les appartements de Claude Gouffier au XVIe siècle, qui est toujours là, euh, avec un, des formes géométriques euh, euh, extrêmement étonnante pour cette, euh, pour cette période et qui fait directement aujourd'hui écho euh, au World Drawing de, de Sol Lewitt. My name is John Hogan and uh, I'm the installations director and archivist for Saul Lewitt wall drawings. Lewitt came to uh, recognition in the late 60s and early uh, 70s. He created his first wall drawing, wall drawing number one, uh, in 1968. He was approached in 1968 by Paula Cooper Gallery to raise, help ra uh, for a benefit to raise funds uh, to help fight against the war in Vietnam. The Lewitt and several other artists were approached and Saul was asked to do a piece. And so he drew his first wall drawing, number one, directly on the wall. And it was a very revolutionary idea. Certainly, we have a long history of what murals are, but Lewitt said, no, I'm gonna draw it on the wall, but when the exhibition is done, just paint it out. Because it was the notion of, This is an idea, and the idea, as long as it is repeatable, is the artwork. So he and several others were certainly playing with the notion of breaking from abstract expressionism, which was based on personal feelings and personal uh, involvement in the creation of the artwork. And so Lewitt said, why does an artwork have to be this thing that's static, exist, made once only and exist only as it is? It will deteriorate over time. Why can't there be an artwork that simply is always has the possibility of being contemporary? I first came to Oran in 1994 with two other studio draftspersons and then worked on this in the original installation of this piece in 1994. So this is a piece that is called <clears throat> Wall Drawing 752. It is con continuous. Um, complex forms with an irregular black band. Unlike um, many of Lewitt's works that are based on a grid, he was starting to break away from the idea of uniform geometry and he was addressing the idea that you could have all these activities and all these visual interchanges go on within a structure and the structure could also shift away from the normal grid. When you think of a grid, it is regulated and 
this only will, the black bands that ultimately will be installed as part of this piece will simply implicate the idea of a grid, but they don't line up. So it, it, he's being very playful. We worked with four local French artists and then three people from the studio to install the work, which is now being reinstalled after 28 years. Um, the building had, as it is a chateau of a certain age, had some repairs that needed to be made. And one of the interesting aspects of Lewitt's work is that it, his practice is based on the idea that it's conceptual artwork, which means the idea is preeminent over the actual reality of the, of the piece. Lewitt's position was he created essentially a score or a diagram or a plan for the work. So as long as people understood what the materials were and how, they, how the work was to be installed, uh, they could continue to make the work contemporary. Right now we're working from the original working drawings that LeWitt created. They're placing pencil marks on the wall and drawing these uh, shapes that are somewhat crystalline in their, in their form. And then ultimately these will be taped out and then inked in every individually. So he also was working with the idea of um, something that was repeatable. So this is a piece that's created with inks, red, yellow, blue, and gray. Those are the only four colors that ultimately are used to create all the colors that will ultimately be this piece. So he indicated the order in which the inks would be applied on, the, on his original working drawing. So if it is yellow first and then it's blue and then it's red, it would be on his working plan, it would say YRB. And that was the, he was thinking in black and white from a working plan, so he wasn't creating a maquette that strictly referenced what the colors would be. He was envisioning the colors only by combinations of process colors. So he wanted very much to play with the idea of things that were readily available and readily understood. So in the traditional printing process, and even now in, with computer printers, you have red, yellow, and blue inks, and you have black, and from those four colors, all these things exist. Um, so when you print out a photo, you're still only using the same things in LeWitt, had embraced that notion of technology and how color theory works and the combinations simply in depending on what colors you put in and what order in which they're executed will change the color drastically. So if it's two yellows and one, or one red, it'll be a certain kind of orange. But if it's one yellow and two reds, it'll be a different kind of orange. So, so all the combinations of colors are here. I mean, when this piece is fully executed, it is probably are literally thousands of combina combinations that will probably be generated on the piece. So he's playing with the mathematics of all the color combinations as well. So it, it really does play into this notion of science where he's like saying, well, this is what two reds and one yellow looks like. This is what two blues and a gray look like. And so all these things create this palette that's extraordinary but it's all coming from this very simple system. Quite frequently, Lewitt, um, there was reference made to him relative to the concept of music. So a, a composer creates a musical composition, but the orchestra performs it. So in this case, we have the very similar structure. Lewitt created this composition, which is the working drawing for this piece. Andrew, who's leading the team here, has executed hundreds of Lewitt's pieces. So he, he is, if you want to follow the notion of a, a, a musician, he is someone who has practiced a lot. So he, can partake that information and train new people. Um, Lewitt famously joked, you know, that the work will always be his. If there's never any question that it's Lewitt's work. And somebody said, well, I don't really fully understand. And Lewitt said, well, my niece is playing piano. She's playing Bach. And Glenn Gould played Bach. They both are Bach. One is more preferable than the other because somebody who spent the time really delved into it, really tried to understand it and tried to be really 
perform the piece as best to they can, that is also part of what Saul's work was about. So every time Andrew installs a piece, there's yet something new that you gain in knowledge, another skill on how to do things more readily, more quickly, or more easily or more accurately. And that also is a collaboration with the artists that are working here. They have skill groups that they are bringing with, and sometimes they have suggestions. So that's really what LeWitt was really stressing was, I want people to think differently on how you could make art. Thank you.